every head bow, every eye focus on the prize. Father, it is into thy hand we commend our spirit. That you would take all of me, Master. Use me in a special way. And these your children. to a child is the gift of love to the mother. Can I get a witness? Amen. Homes are terrorized today because of the lack of that precious love of the mother. To the mother. But we're not going to hold you long. Festivities from the day, the gifts that came to hear a word this morning. Amen. Our guests from Baltimore and around, nice to see you again back for another year. You didn't mess around this time. You brought a whole truck. <laughs> who lost their life on the battlefield. To the fathers that have an empty plate at the table. But God is still God. And he's still in the blessing business. Do I have a witness? Amen. I thank to my two sons that came up from Fredericksburg. I call them sons because one is a grandson. He's just like a son. Uh, son uh, and just a blessing to me as well as my wife to just have them both by our side. We're not getting no younger. Come on, somebody. Amen. The heritage of what takes place across the thresholds of life. Soon we will lay this body down. So, fathers, I say to you today, love anything else. Live for God. Why 
while you have a chance. Amen. And if you're not a father, let's go anyhow. Amen. Amen. Do I have a witness? Amen. So beautifully read by the young man earlier. And I want to draw your attention to that 15th <coughs> chapter of John. It's often read, normally at a home going service. You hear it a lot of times at the opening of the distress downtime of folk in the walks of life. And the passage opens up talking about let not your heart be troubled. We're living in a world today where fathers are troubled on every hand. Some feel that they have failed in life. Others are not sure about where they're going. But there are many who is holding on to God's unchanging hand. But the Bible says, don't be troubled. That ye believe in God, believe also in me. What I like about what this passage brings together is that it says, in my father's house. That requires some heritage as well as some inheritance in order for you to understand what the passage is pushing toward us right now. It says in, it didn't say in the house. It says in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. He goes on to say, I go, somebody say go, go. <laughs> to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Right. That where I am, there ye may be also. Well, I want to use for a thought this morning to special message to the fathers and to the living amongst us who don't know who their real father is. And then I want to explore it a little bit uh, just on how important it is to have a home to go to. And the importance of that is Poverty is one thing on the physical aspect, but there's no reason for us to die and leave this world on spiritual poverty. Do I have a witness? Amen. Not for what he died for. He died that we all might have a right to the tree of life. So the thought path, I, I just want to, to just you to collect on these words in my father's house. Look at somebody real quick and say, neighbor, I don't know about you. But I'm claiming my house. I am claiming my house. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions. I want you to put your hands together with Jesus, right? It's not just talking about any house. Uh, it is opening up and it <coughs> gives to us a personal endeavor Amen. that in order for me to understand what the mind represents here, there's got to be some ownership Amen. in the process. And for what Jesus did for you and I, he makes it plain that there are many mansions within this house. All right. Now, I want to focus on the many mansions first. Because you got to get your mind off the physical things. And I want you to realize that God made your mansion just for you. Amen. In other words, it's a personal mansion. That's why the Bible is 
proclaiming that there are many. For as many as there are of you, there is that many mansions. And then he said, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, which is heaven, that you may be also. So if I knew that somebody was preparing a house for me, I would get my stuff together. <laughs> Pack up and get ready to move. Somebody say amen. amen. In other words, I need to get to my mansion. Amen. My mansion in this guy. Now most folk don't, don't, don't really get the real meaning of when somebody says my mansion. I mean, we work hard all of our lives. We save up millions of dollars. We buy up a lot of timber, a lot of lumber, a lot of brick, a lot of glass, only just to leave it back here. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody real quick and say, you can't take it with you. <laughs> so the good part about this is the mansion that is being built for you will never get torn down. Amen. Y'all here. Amen. Can't nobody tear it down. Amen. Because anything that Jesus builds up, God help me somebody, the devil can't tear it down. The wind may blow every now and then, but it will not come down. This mansion that is being built for you and I is a lasting circumstances. There are temporary circumstances in this life. And you and I have a determination of when we get tired of one place, <laughs> we move out and move to another. Right. And if we don't like that one too long, we move again. Pretty soon, uh, you get tired of moving. Right. Help me somebody. Amen. And you just sit down and say, well, look, why am I doing oh, I, everything I see I want? Every place I move, God help us if we're looking at the Jones. Because if the Jones is add on another room, you want to add on another room too. Help me somebody. All of this will pass because we're building on temporary circumstances. Amen. But in my father's house, there is an eternal concept yes. that God is trying to show all of us yes. that the many mansions that he's already prepared for you is a building not made by hand. Amen. Help me somebody. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I'm i kind of disturbed when, when I hear the weather report. Yesterday there was a tornado warning. Lord, the first lady was going crazy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Fear is one thing. But I believe even in the midst of all of our trials, God will take care of us. Well, the warning said, take heed, go find shelter. And I thought about the issues of life. When the storm is raging, when the billows are roaring, when trouble is on the horizon, when, when things seem like they just don't want to go right, that is when God does his best work. Amen. And I say that on experience and experience only because, see, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You can't tell it like I tell it. What he's done for me. I, 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 I feel every now and then that the house that I'm living in is getting slower by the day. Meaning the shell. We're getting older by the minute. But I know our place 
Well, ain't nobody crying. Amen. Help me somebody. I know a place where there is long-lasting love. Everlasting peace. Joy. Unspeakable joy. I know a place that where every day will be sunny. Sabbath will have no end. I know a place where I know I can look around and walk around heaven all day. A place that he has prepared. And it's a building. Not made by hand. But what I like about this passage also, it says in, the word in there, you can't get in the house without some movement. I can't expect coverage. I can't expect comfort. I can't expect anything unless I get into the house. Are you there? Amen. Too many folk want to sit on the outside of the house. And expect God to do all the work. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait on the Lord. I, I am kind of weary, wounded, and sad. But I believe the Lord said he would, he would work this out. And we're worried, waiting on Jesus to do all the work while we sit there and pout. But in the house is where the blessing is. Can I get a witness? In the arms of God is where the anointing breaks the yoke. In the arms of Almighty God is where the breakthrough actually comes. The reason the writer says in my father's house is because he wanted to take ownership of something that had already been prepared for him. Amen. See, I can't go in your house like you can go in your house. But all the houses were built by the same contract. And somebody said his name. His name is Jesus. And the building are being made for you and I. And the reason the collection says it wasn't made by hand, in other words, Satan don't have nothing on the foundation. Amen. Come on, Jesus. Amen. He came up for your feathers in his toughest hour. God said he would be there, and above everything else, he said, you will never be alone. Amen. Why? <laughs> because I am the Alpha, and the Omega. The Omega. The beginning and the end. But the bad part about this day and this time, the setting, this morning, we just <laughs> came through a week of crisis. Week after week is something new. And you wonder, you sit down and you say, well, God, what is this world coming to? Well, that's an easy answer. You saw me sit down because two things that are evident is coming to an end. So ain't no need you trying to live like you got forever. It is coming to an end. That's not a scare tactic. That's a reality. In my father's house is where you'll find safety, comfort, peace, joy. What is the message all about, Pastor? I'm saying lasting things is what you need to be looking for in this day and time. Lasting things about what Jesus have promised you and I. If he prepared your mansion for you, you don't have to buy it. It's already had a bill of sale. Already been purchased by his blood. So what's your excuse now? You don't have to make no payments. It's already paid for. You don't have to worry about a mortgage. Because he owns the heel and the cattle. You don't look around 
Soon enough, you'll find out he owns you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Lasting things is what we should look toward in this day and time. In the preparation of why he did this for us is because he loved us so much. Amen. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, Williams, I'm coming back. Ain't no need me building a house for you if you don't want to live in it. Come on, somebody. Amen. There ought to be somebody here today that is preparing their lives, their heart, their souls, and everything about them for the new home that he's already made for you. The serious part about this, you don't know when you're going home, but you're going. Help me, somebody. But the building will never fall down. The building will never lose its foundation. The building will always have your best interest. But why in this day and time, Pastor, is, is folk in such an uproar? Why is it that, that I can't, can't understand that, that, that out of all that what Jesus did for me there on the cross, I still cannot get the edge on obedience, on love, on forgiveness, on joy, on happiness. I want to be able to understand that if you prepare a place for me, then I would have sense enough, God sense that is, to get myself ready to get in that mansion. It's a serious business. If he prepared it for you, what's your hang up? What is the problem? Well, I'll tell you. We were already born in sin. And I know this don't sound like a Father's Day message to you. But yet it is. Because in my Father's house is where we should want to go. Do I have a witness? Amen. You're looking awful quiet and sleepy on me now. Huh? Go ahead down to the third verse one more time. He said, look where he says, and if I go, knowing he's already gone. Amen. Huh? Yeah. If I go and prepare, he's telling you and I, well, look, if I'm doing all this for you, what is your hang up? Come on, somebody. Amen. If I go to prepare a place for you, what does that if mean? Huh? What you gonna do? Say it again. What you gonna do? Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. I heard that. I heard that. What are you gonna do? What you gonna do? How many? He said, if I go and prepare the place for you, I'm coming back again. The best part about this is. At a funeral setting, this passage is read over and over again. But the concept of the story is people get ready. There's a train coming out the line. Amen. And Jesus is coming back for those who are his own. I believe that, that if we would pay close attention to the time, as well as pay close attention to our Heavenly Father, that this mansion that he's already prepared for us is about to come to reality. The good part about it, there is no foreclosure on it. Amen. Help me somebody. Amen. There's no lean on it. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Holy Ghost. There's nothing that nobody can take from you Amen. once you get it. Because right. once you get it, it's yours. It's yours. Amen. And what I like about it, we're building toward something not made by hand. Amen. Our objective here is to take this passage, fold it up on the table of our heart, and work toward eternal life. 
somewhere where the wicked will cease from trouble. Amen. And our weary souls will be at rest. The Bible says every day will be Sunday. Amen. Sabbath will have no end. Yes. We don't have to worry about nobody breaking through. Yes. We don't have to worry about trouble on this side of Jordan. Right. We don't have to worry about crying. No. Our last tear will come out. Jesus says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Fathers, love your children. And when you love them, love them like the Heavenly Father loves us. Amen. Amen. Not only that, take care of your children. You'll be able to say one day, tell your neighbor, your friends, and your loved ones, come and go with me to my father's house. In my father's house, there's peace. Happiness will never cease. In my father's house, there is love. In my father's house, that is joy. Amen. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. I've got to make a trip. Yeah. I'm going to make a trip. On that gospel ship. On that gospel ship. And make it to my father's house. My father's house. Come on, get on your feet and give God some praise.